What if I told you the night sky as we know it might drastically change, all thanks to a star 700 times larger than our sun about to go kaboom? That's right folks, today we're embarking on a cosmic journey to explore the giant among giants, Betelgeuse, a star that could be on the brink of going supernova. Stick around to the end because we're not only unraveling the mysteries surrounding this gargantuan star, but we're also going to discuss what it means for us here on Earth. Will we witness this magnificent firework in our our lifetime. But before that, let's get to know a bit more about this super giant. Betelgeuse is a star of monumental proportions. If you positioned Betelgeuse where our sun currently sits, its size would extend all the way to the orbit of Jupiter. It is that big. Betelgeuse is located 640 light years away in the constellation of Orion. What's particularly interesting about Betelgeuse is its fluctuating brightness, setting it apart from many other celestial bodies. But Betelgeuse is not just a massive, possibly about to go supernova star. It's a piece of celestial architecture with a past as fascinating as its future. This celestial has been a faithful guide in the sky for travelers across time and cultures. Picture this, sailors of old out on the vast undulating ocean with no GPS or compass, just the wild sea, the wind and the stars above. For these seafarers, Betelgeuse was not just a star, it was a crucial pointer, a kind of stellar GPS, helping them navigate the treacherous expanses of water. Today, this twinkling light was the difference between getting lost at sea or finding their way back home. And it's not just the sailors who held Betelgeuse in high regard. This star has twinkled its way into the history and mythology of various cultures worldwide. From the sands of the Arabian desert to the great civilizations of ancient Egypt, Betelgeuse was known and venerated. The star's name comes from the Arabic phrase Yad al jorza which translates to the Hand of Orion. Ancient Egyptians associated it with their god, Osiris, often depicted with a red crown symbolizing Betelgeuse's distinctive red color. And let's not forget about the ancient Chinese scriptures that mention Betelgeuse and its significance. However, appreciation for Betelgeuse isn't only historical. The art of stargazing, a practice as old as human civilization itself, has kept the interest in stars like Betelgeuse alive. Ancient astronomers would look up at the sky and document what they saw, much like a cosmic diary entry. Interestingly, the Chinese were the first to document a supernova in the year 185. This mysterious bright light that appeared in the sky shone for several weeks and then faded, and was later recognized as the explosive end of a star's life cycle. Now that we've navigated through the fascinating history and cultural significance of Betelgeuse, let's venture deeper into what supernova actually is. You're about to understand how a star gives the grandest and final performance of its life life. Let's dive into the final act. In the simplest terms, a supernova is the spectacular finale of a star's life. Think of it as the star's last hoorah before it bows out. But how does this celestial spectacle come about? Well, the star in its last stages runs out of fuel. Yes, even stars need fuel to shine. When this happens, its core begins to compact into a super dense ball of iron about 3,000 kilometers wide. The weight is mind-boggling, roughly 1.4 times the mass of our sun. That's when the trouble begins. The protons in the core start sucking in electrons, forming neutrons and causing the core to collapse even further. This violent reaction reaches a point where the core can't shrink anymore, and then, boom, the star explodes in a supernova, a dazzling display of light and energy, leaving behind a neutron star. Now coming back to Betelgeuse, our star of interest. Did you know it's a variable star? That means its brightness changes over time. For more than a century, Betelgeuse has been dimming and brightening roughly every 400 days. But in 2019, things got a bit weird. The star dimmed more than usual, 2.5 times fainter than its regular cycles, an event the scientific community aptly named the Great Dimming. Scientists believe that Betelgeuse went through a massive surface mass ejection, losing a big chunk of itself, which resulted in the formation of large gas clouds that partially obscured our view of the star. Since this event, Betelgeuse has been acting rather oddly. Its brightness oscillation cycle has reduced to about 200 days, meaning it's pulsating almost twice as fast as before. Currently, the star seems to be in a phase of increased brightness, further adding to the intrigue and speculation. Now, the big question is, when will this celestial giant go supernova? To get a clearer picture, let's dive a bit into
into stellar fusion and how Betelgeuse's life cycle compares to our very own sun. Stars, in a way, are nature's nuclear fusion reactors. Their lifeblood is the process of fusing hydrogen into helium, creating energy in the form of heat and light. It's like the sun in our solar system, which is significantly older than Betelgeuse and has been burning hydrogen in its core for over 5 billion years. It's set to continue this for a few billion years more before it exhausts all its hydrogen. In contrast, Betelgeuse has been around for just 10 million years, but it's already out of hydrogen. But how can that be? Well, Betelgeuse is much more massive than the Sun, at least 10 times more. These heavyweight stars are hotter, brighter, and burn through their fuel a lot quicker than smaller stars like the Sun. When they run out of hydrogen, they expand and turn into red giants. So where is Betelgeuse now in this cosmic journey? Astronomers suggest that Betelgeuse, the red supergiant, has not only exhausted its hydrogen, but has gone past the stage of our Sun and is now fusing carbon into heavier elements in its core. However, this carbon burning stage has many sub-stages, and exactly when Betelgeuse will go supernova depends on which of these stages it's currently at. It's this uncertainty that makes it so hard to predict when Betelgeuse will explode, with estimates ranging from a few decades to thousands of years. Imagine for a moment the day when Betelgeuse decides it's time for the grand finale. It's an event of such cosmic proportions that will make everything else seem like a sideshow. During the day, the sun won't be the only thing lighting up the sky. Betelgeuse's supernova will shine as brightly as the moon, visible even in the daytime. And when the night comes, it will turn the darkest corners of the sky into a cosmic canvas painted with a dazzling spectacle. But the show doesn't end with the initial explosion. When the matter from the supernova collides with the stellar material surrounding Betelgeuse, it creates a shockwave. As it travels through space, this shockwave ionizes gas and dust in its path, giving birth to an intricately patterned radiant glow. This supernova remnant will be visible long after the initial light from the explosion has faded. In a bittersweet goodbye, Orion will lose a shoulder and we'll lose an old friend. It's important to realize that witnessing such an event is an incredibly rare treat. In the vast Milky Way galaxy, a supernova like this only happens once or twice every century. But if we're lucky, we could be the generation that sees Betelgeuse's epic finale. Remember though, all of this is speculation. We're not sure when Betelgeuse will explode, but we know it's inevitable. Now I know what you're thinking. What happens to us when this behemoth explodes? Will there be any repercussions on our home turf? Physicist Michio Kaku has had a few words to say on this matter. According to him, a supernova explosion from Betelgeuse could result in an uptick in radiation and cause some minor damage to our ozone layer. I can almost hear you gasping, but before you run off to build a bunker, let's put things into perspective. The thing is, a supernova would need to be within about 150 light years of Earth to cause significant damage. Remember, Betelgeuse is 640 light years away, so it's comfortably outside that danger zone. The increased radiation and minor ozone damage that Kaku mentioned? We're talking about potential effects so small that you'd need scientific instruments to measure them. In other words, it's extremely unlikely that Betelgeuse's supernova would bring about the end of the world. There's no need to panic. In fact, such an event would be more of a spectacle for us to marvel at, rather than a harbinger of doom. While we can't be absolutely certain about what will happen when Betelgeuse goes supernova, our current understanding of astronomy gives us reason to breathe easy. But what happens when that explosion fades, and Betelgeuse, our old celestial buddy, is no more? Sure, the spectacular supernova would be a sight to behold, but afterwards, the Orion constellation will be missing one of its brightest stars, and we, the star gazers and cosmic explorers would have to adjust to the new status quo. But the story doesn't end with Betelgeuse's departure. No, far from it. The universe is vast, and every celestial event, every supernova, every shift in the cosmos opens up a whole new realm of possibilities. The explosion of Betelgeuse would leave behind a wealth of data, a trove of information for us to explore and dissect. At the end of the day, the potential supernova of Betelgeuse serves as a powerful reminder of the dynamic and ever-changing nature of our universe. If you thought Betelgeuse was wild, then check out our video about the real Death Star of the universe. So don't forget to keep your eyes on the stars and your curiosity peaked. There's so much more to explore in this endless universe, and we can't wait to guide you through it. Until then, keep wondering.